Yes, hello. This time we make a short inter interlude. Let's call uh, because we need to 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 talk about some coding. Yeah, we will use some some stuff, and maybe I have some hints for you, which are uh, okay for you. Yeah, which you can use because now we really start to 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 start code. This is our program here. Yeah. We've just written this. Yeah. In the last in the last uh, task we have written this and you know there is this thing if I type in 5 then the LED number 5 is turned on. Yeah. This is what we coded. So let's see how could we manage if I don't want to turn on the LED number 5 but LEDs from zero to this. So if you ever want to turn on five LEDs, let's say if this five would mean turn on the first five LEDs. Yeah. What can be done about this? Okay, so here is the code part yeah, where we are reading. The number is now something between zero and eight uh, seven. Yeah. Of course, if I want to turn, interpret now the number, if I want to turn on 0, 1, 2, 3, I would have to use up to 8. I would allow up to 8. Yeah? So, that's one change. Okay? So now we can enter 0, then 0 LED should lit. We could enter 1, then 1 LED should lit. We could enter 5, then 5 LED should be light, light lit up. Okay, so this is in the number. This is what sets in the number. Okay. One possibility, the number is an integer, one possibility is to make it with a so-called for loop. Yeah. The for loop looks like this, for, okay. then bracket, the variable I want to see, this is the number, so I want to look at the number, then there's a condition, until the number, number is bigger than Zero. Okay. Ah, of course, semicolon. Here should be a semicolon until the numbers begin at zero. Decrement the number. Okay. This means if the number is zero, we will not even get in. If the number is one, number is bigger than zero, it will run through, then decrement the number, then it's not bigger than zero and stop. Yeah. So this one we will shift over here. Now we set the bit in the LEDs byte yeah, and with the number. Okay. And then we update the shift register. That's it. Yeah. Here I want to show you how this is working. Turning on lead count, yeah, and here right after after if. Ah, after four, of course. After four. X is okay. And of course I need to delete before the LEDs. Yeah, because I'm filling up the LEDs with my new number anyway. So, if I type in a new number, I will delete whatever is an LED. So no LED would be lit. I don't see it because I don't call up the shift registers. Then I look how many LEDs I have to turn on. And for every LED I have to turn on, I'm setting one bit in this LED. Yeah? If I enter, for instance, three, then there is three, then, I, then on the first run through, I will set the bit number three. Second run through, I set the bit number two. Next run through, I set the bit number one. Yeah? Next run through, I set the bit number, I set no bit number anymore. Yeah? We will see what this is causing. Okay, 
So I will now upload. And then now enter one. Uh -huh. I would not ex have expected this. It's not the first one, it's the second one. But it's one LED. Yeah? I enter now five. Aha. Uh -huh. Okay. It's five LEDs, one, two, three, four, five, but also the first one is not lit. Yeah? And here on the, on the uh, output we can see lit count five, after four it's zero, so it's counting down. Okay? There should be maybe a space, but why is the first not lit? Because of course I have to use number minus one here because I want to not to turn, if I type in three, yeah, I don't want to turn on LED three, but two, one and zero. Okay. Upload once again. Make it big, clear output, two, whatever, uh -huh. zero, nothing, two, two, Seven, seven, eight, eight, four. You see, now it's working fine. So this would be one possibility. This would be one possibility to turn on the LEDs with this four. Okay, so the four needs an integer value here, a condition, and what should be done with the integer, and then in the body it needs some commands. We could even, we could even, for instance, to see how this is working, we print here the number always, yeah? and then we also print a space. Well, let's print this. Then we see exactly how this number is always counting down. Okay. So I'll type in the number five now. Five, four, three, two, one, zero is not executed in here anymore because the number must be created to be then zero to enter this. Okay, That's the for loop approach. One possibility. Uh, Now even the output should look very nice. This is some some sometimes I'm giving seven six five four three two one after four zero. Wunderbar, wunderbar. Okay. So you see, this you could use. Yeah. But let's say we want to turn on a specific, or let's say we are now will do another approach. Okay, that's one possibility. One other possibility is that I define a so-called array. Okay, array is nothing more than, I will simply show you. Yeah? So I So we will need some byte arrays, yeah, byte, yeah, that's the type, and I'll type in, uh, uh, I will use a name, that's the patterns, that should be my patterns, and I want to have eight patterns, okay, this is how an, how an array is defined with these brackets these brackets I define an array. Now this is not just one byte, this is not just one byte, these are now eight bytes and I access it if I, how I access it I show you afterwards. If I make it like this, yeah, then whatever is inside patterns is not initialized. 
if I want to have something inside, yeah, I could write something like this. Okay, and now I can define some values. 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, and so on. Whatever. Yeah? Must be 8, of course. 5, 6, 7. Break, close to bracket. Semicolon should be should be able to, to compile it. Yeah. And below here I could simply forget about this. Yeah. I could say I turn on patterns of number. So if the number is 0, yeah, then I will use this one. If the number is 1, then I will use this one. If the number is 2, then I will use this one. If the number is 5, 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, I'm using this one. Yeah. Notice, we don't even need these LEDs anymore. Yeah, It's not... I can remove this by, by simply and I can remove this. This line I am also. It's gone simply. I've substitu I substituted this with these patterns. Yeah. Download. See what's happened. Zero. Nothing. One. One LED. Two. Aha. Uh -huh. Second LED, three, two LEDs. Why is that? Yeah, because these are these are values here. Yeah, so zero is a zero was okay. One is okay. If I want to turn on two LEDs, I have to make it three. If I want to turn on three LEDs, I have to make it seven. Yeah. If I turn on four LEDs, the Four LEDs. This this digital representation is fifteen. Yeah, if I have fifteen, it's the four LEDs. Then we have thirty-one. Yeah, then we have sixty-three, and then we have one hundred twenty-seven. Yeah? If I use these values, yeah, then this should work. Turn on one. Two, three, seven, eight. Oh, what is eight? Ah, <laughs> yeah. You see, now, now I have run into trouble mm -hmm. because I am accessing eight, and this is zero, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Eight would be the next byte. I can access this as you see, but it's not I'm not using eight patterns, I'm using nine patterns. Yeah, zero, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. And that's 255. Okay. So there you need to be careful. You can access the whole memory. Yeah. It does not check if this if this array is ended or not. I could even ask patterns 126 that would read some byte which is way 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 beyond. Yeah? So there, I don't know what is inside the memory there. Nobody knows. Yeah? It's just luck. There you have to be really careful that if you're defining an array with 9 yeah, then you have to take care that there's no more than 9 you're accessing. Let's see, 8. Ah, now it's working. Wunderbar. Yeah. The only thing which we don't really like, or which I don't really like, is that I have to think about what 
bits or how the bit uh, pattern that I have always have to calculate between the decimal representation and the binary representation. Binary representation would be fine here. Yeah? To have binary constants, I can mark it with B and then I will come write one byte. Yeah? And I can even write in the next in the next line. Okay. Do it again. Now I want to have two. Now I want to have three. Now I want to have four LEDs lit. Okay. Now I want to have five. Now I want to have Six, seven. Uh huh. So one is still missing. I have to enter the zeros here. And of course, B one 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 one. Ooh, a little bit too much. Okay. This now gives me much more idea which LED will be turned on. Download, upload, up, 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 upload. I don't know why this is up and I'm down, but okay. Five. See? Five, six, seven. It takes this, these patterns. That's a nice feature, I think, because we could even, we could even select, select real a pattern here. Let's say one means only one between, two means two between, three means three between, four means four between, five, uh, then there would be no difference. Yeah. Download. So seven, six, five, four, three, see? Three is now is now the pattern. Yeah. The pet the pattern of three was one one zero zero one 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 zero 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 one one one. Exactly that is. Two would be zero zero one one zero zero one one. Yeah. Let's try two. Yeah. Zero zero one one zero zero one one. Perfect. Let's try one. Every second LED should be turned on, zero, no LED should be turned on. You see, this might help yeah, to, to do also, also patterns which are not cannot be easily calculated. Cannot be easily calculated just by defining this as an array. That's the big advantage of an array. You're much more flexible. The disadvantage, you need more memory. Because now here I need 9 bytes, before I just used 1 byte. Okay. One thing is also to mention, these patterns, I could overwrite them. Yeah? That's maybe a nice feature. Yeah? If I say, okay, pattern number 5 is now something else. If I, I want to go sure that I do not overwrite those patterns, I can use the keyword constant, a uh, const. Okay, Ctrl D makes it perfect. Const. Now this is somehow protected. These patterns. If I try to write it, the compiler will say, "Hey, you try to write on a constant value. This is not possible, my friend." And will give you an error. Yeah. So here, for instance, if I write here pattern number one shall be one. If I try this and compile, a pet how is it called? Patterns, patterns, patterns. Sorry, because 
right now it tells me it is not declared yeah? would also be an error of course compile and there's a assignment of read only location okay? so this means eh, you have defined it as constant if I delete this constant I can compile it yeah? so if you want to get sure that you cannot override this because it has to be constant use the const yeah? then the compiler is checking if you maybe have some coding error somewhere okay I hope this little introduction this little this little uh, coding hints help you with your tasks yeah? yeah next time then we will see I, I think you can pretty well use especially these ones okay so long thank you for your attention and goodbye